So we have a new uh, radio arrived in today, the Bafang UVB2. Comes in a plain box here, the usual stuff, the uh, generic uh, manual. There's the uh, radio in the box. And just the usual stuff, the antenna, the belt clip, the charger, you get the drift. And it's a, uh, obviously a, uh, a foreign adapter, but we've got loads of those. Let's have a look at the radio and see what we get. Now, colour-wise, I couldn't actually get the uh, silver and black one. They don't seem to, uh, no one seems to have that one at the minute. But this is the other variant, which has the um, the blue and the orange button on the front. We'll just peel off the uh, protective uh, bit of film. Um, feels nice and light. This looks like a different battery to the other radios. It has the usual um, connections on the top there. The antenna, which looks like a male SMA, the flashlight and the volume on off. We have the um, the usual uh, call button and the monitor button and the PTT on that side, um, and the uh, obviously the mic jack, a headphone jack, and that looks to be the standard connections, the Kenwood type connections on the side there. Um, I'll check that battery to see if it's similar. But again, it looks like a different battery than what's supplied with the uh, the UV5X. Um, there's the UV, there's the UV5X, let's just have a different, yeah, it, it, it does look like a different battery to the UV5X, um, which is a shame, but we'll try, we'll perhaps try connecting it up anyway, so, it slides in, quite a tight fit, turn her on, Channel mode. okay, and this isn't a reverse screen, this is your standard screen that you would get on, um, the UV5R plus type uh, range. It's not the reverse screen that you see on the GT3, which has got the mode. got the reverse uh, type screen. Once the light drops out, you'll see. <clears throat> there we go. And I think these are a bit easier to read in daylight without. I mean, these look nice when the display is on, but I think these are easier to read in the daylight. So it's my preference. Anyway, let's uh, let's pop the the antenna and the belt clip on it and uh, have it give it a whiz round. Right, this is the radio as it uh, comes out of the box uh, with the um, with the belt clip attached now. Sorry, and uh, I've also attached the lanyard strap to the top of it. I always find that quite useful. Belt clip again, really, really useful thing to uh, to have on the on the radio. Just makes uh, portable use better. You can just clip it to your belt. Um, nice thing on this, it's got a really I don't know if you can see that a really nice ruggedized uh, push button. Uh, they're really grippy. You're not going to miss that. Although I did find my hand in conventional use, my hand tends to fall into pushing that button um, instead of the PTT. But um, we'll get this radio on charge and give it a go. It seems to have a full a full battery out of the box there. So uh, we'll stick it on the power meter and uh, and see what sort of power we get out of it. But I'm guessing it's going to be similar to the other radios. Um, it's it's similar in size to the. Um, to the UV5X, it looks like a very similar design. Um, it feels a little bit better quality uh, than the 5X. Um, get the size there. Yeah. Um, so it is a very similar size radio to the 5X. I think a really stylish radio. I did like the silver and black version of this. Like I said, the original photos look really, really good for that. But I don't know this is this is all right. There doesn't seem to be at the moment many eBay sellers selling this version of the radio. I had to get this from um, from AliExpress so um, but it and it took a few weeks to come, it took about three weeks to come but uh, we'll get on the power meter and see see what it does. Right I was going to try and do a power test but the uh, problem we got is my little adapter uh, which is a female SMA to the male connector does not fit in the receptacle in the top of the radio it's too the casing is, is is isn't big enough. Uh, now this is something to be aware of, particularly if you've got if you want to use this radio with a third party antenna, um, you might find that some of the uh, some of the whips will not fit into that receptacle housing because they've it's not made it's not made big enough. Um, the uh, the five X is there's the five X. You can see that's more. It protrudes more at the top, and it actually does connect up properly onto the 5x and screws in, and we were fine. But the um, this uh, you might find if you want to run a, a different antenna than the stock antenna into this, you have to machine this out, or or perhaps 
cut the antenna down around the edge for it to fit. So we won't be able to get this on the power meter today, uh, but we'll, we'll take it out on the road and have a little test with it and see how it performs. Uh, <clears throat> right, we've got the radio hooked up here to COM port 9 via the USB and uh, we've copied, <clears throat> basically just copy and paste like in a spreadsheet, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the channels from the UV5R which I'd had, which, which I'd had uh, saved as a, as, a, as a file anyway, which I downloaded, so I just copied those and pasted them straight into the um, into the uh, the settings for this radio, and we're just going to upload. Now there isn't a specific setting for the UVB2 at the moment, um, but you can just use the UV5R plus uh, settings. It will work absolutely fine. Well, I had no problems, but uh, please don't sue me if you end up bricking your radio when you try it, though. Um, so yes, we basically just program these up, and then click the um, the upload uh, to radio, upload to radio. There we go, upload to radio, COM9, okay, and there we go, cloning, it really is very, very quick, and you see the little green light flashing away on the radio there, to show that it's uh, accepting the data, and, uh, and then it's done, and that's it, the radio reboots, and all of those channels are on the radio. It's the uh, the standard arrangement of features, as you'll find on most other uh, Baofang radios. Um, Six, nice five, bright display, clear four, audio. <clears throat> five, you can obviously turn the uh, turn the lady off, turn the voice off if you want to. Um, the usual standard function is uh, flashlight on, flashing and off, and then we have the the FM radio. Uh, not tried, really tried that. I'm not really that interested in uh, listening to FM radio on here, but. Seems to work for the classical music. There we go. But that's useful to have on there, you know, and that does work uh, if that's your bag, if you're at the beach and you want to uh, listen to a bit of classical music. And um, yeah, so it's all programmed up now. So we're going to whiz around, whiz out. I've said that a number of times, I know, but we are going to go out now and we are going to test this and see what it uh, what it performs like. A uh, slight change of plan. We're actually going to take out the uh, the Tomfa UV nine eight five. Uh, supposedly a slightly high power, more high powered radio, but uh, I've not found it to be that much more high powered in practice. Uh, we're going to take that one out because I realised on the last test we we used the plus, the UV5R plus. So I'm going to use the UV985 and uh, and see how it compares against this radio. Uh, one thing I did notice the VFO uh, memory button is that button there. It's not actually labelled. It's just a big orange circle there, uh, but. Uh, that's the, uh, the button to dig you in and out of Channel VFO mode. and memory. Frequency mode. Okay. A few people have asked what sort of radio I use. Uh, antenna I use with my radio, sorry. And there it is. That's a 2 meter 70 centimeter collinear on a 15 foot pole right at the top of the house. And you'll see a little wire going off the base of the antenna there that runs down my garden. That's my a long wire for HF. And that's my G5RV, you probably can't see it, over there, which I use on HF as well. So that's the, uh, the aerial that I use to receive the signal from. So you can see why over the longer distances it, uh, it does actually work quite well. Obviously you'll get less performance in a wooded area or town environment, but uh, this is just what I like to do. It's, but, it, but people have asked, so I thought I would show it you. That is the collinear. So we do get some gain from that. Uh, when plugged into these uh, these radios. Right, we're out on location A now, much sunnier and uh, nice and bright daylight. We've got the uh, the SDR running on the phone on TeamViewer there, not very well. But um, we'll try and pick a signal off that. I might have to move it. We don't get a very good cell signal in the car at this location. So we'll just try and move it and then uh, we'll see what kind of signal we're getting back at base. So I need a million pairs of hands to do this. There's the SDR on the, uh, on the phone. It's not brilliant, we'll try. G7LNK testing, G7LNK testing. See the spike? So you can see that we're recording on the SDR okay. And we'll uh, we'll go out there and actually outside and stand up and uh, do a, re a recording with it. All right, this is uh, G7LNK, G7LNK location A, approximately three miles with the, B the Bafang UV B2 Plus. Bafang UV B2 Plus. This is uh, 
uh, G7LNK, G7LNK, location A, approximately three miles, with the, the Bafang UVB2+, Bafang UVB2+. This is G7LNK, Golf 7, Lima November, Kilo, uh, portable, uh, testing Bafang UVB2+, BF UVB2+, location A, at three miles. This is G7LNK, Golf 7, Lima November, Kilo, uh, portable, uh, testing Bafang UVB2+, BF UVB2+, location A, at three miles. This is G7LNK, Golf 7, Lima November, Kilo, portable, with a Tonfer UV985 at location A, three miles. This is G7LNK, Golf 7, Lima November, Kilo, portable, with a Tonfer UV985 at location A, three miles. This is G7LNK, Golf 7, Lima November, Kilo, with a Tonfer UV985 at location A, three miles. UHF 430.200 MHz. This is G7LNK Golf 7 Lima November Kilo with the Tonfer UV 985 at location A, 3 miles. UHF 430.200 MHz. Right, let's go to location, uh, location B, which is 6 miles away. This road, if you, you notice, there's not a lot of traffic on this road. It's actually not really used as a road much these days. It's actually like a, it's been cordoned off. So it's it's like a lay-by really, it's not really a road. Um, well, it is a road, but it's it's a lay-by. Okay, so we're gonna go to location, location B, which is six miles away. Right, we're here at location B, which is uh, six miles away, approximately. And um, we're gonna do another test of these two radios. It can be a little bit noisy when the cars pass, so. Uh, just have to excuse that. So we've got the radios there on the chair, and uh, we'll uh, we'll give them a go and see how they get picked up on the SDR back at home. Right, this is G7LNK Golf 7 Lima November Kilo with the Bafang UVB2 Plus at location B, approximately six miles. Right, this is G7LNK Golf 7 Lima November Kilo with the Bafang UVB2 Plus at location B, approximately six miles. This is G7LNK Portable, uh, G7LNK Portable testing the Bafang UVB2, uh, UVB2 Plus at approximately 6 miles at location B, UHF. This is G7LNK Portable, uh, G7LNK Portable testing the Bafang UVB2, uh, UVB2 Plus at approximately 6 miles at location B, UHF. This is G7LNK Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable with the Tonfa UV985 UV at location B, approximately 6 miles. This is G7LNK Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable with the Tonfa UV985 UV at location B, approximately 6 miles. This is G7LNK Portable, G7LNK Portable with the Tonfa UV985 at approximately 6 miles at location B, UHF check. This is G7LNK Portable, G7LNK Portable with the Tonfa UV985 at approximately 6 miles at location B, UHF check. Um, my overall impressions of the uh, of this radio, the uh, B, I keep forgetting the name, the BFUV B2 Plus. My overall impressions of this radio is it's a very good radio for the money. It's very very similar to the 5X radio. Um, I do like the the grippy uh, push button on the side there. That's really nice and tactile. Feels really really nice. And overall, the radio feels a really good quality. Radio. I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, but it's still the same chipset inside, it's the same electronics and everything, but these radios are so cheap that it's crazy not to just buy them. I mean, they're £20, you know, delivered. And and they're such a nice little little unit to have, and they're very collectible, and that's what I'm doing. I'm uh, I'm collecting these. Uh, they're so cheap as, as it for it not to be an issue. 
and um, I've decided I'm going to collect all the different models of these as they come out um, because they're just so cheap and, and so reliable and work so very well. I mean, you can pay a lot of money for a Kenwood, a Yesu, an Icom, um, but they still essentially do the same thing. Um, these really are fantastic value for money and um, there, there really is they're a no-brainer really for your first radio and you know if you're in if you just want some radios to you know for to play around with the family and to to, to uh you know for security or for goofing around with your friends while you're paintballing again an inexpensive little radio uh to use and um i mean some of the features like the flashlight and uh, stuff and the fm radio are a bit gimmicky but overall these really are fantastic radios and um uh, I think we'd all be mad not to go collecting these, wouldn't we? Okay, uh, if you've uh, if you've been watching, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I do try and uh, uh, make them uh, on a fairly regular basis. They do seem quite popular on my channel, so I'll endeavour to do many more as I pick up more of these radios. So if you have been watching, thanks very much.